Hello, GateCon. How are we doing? Thank you for being here. I know it's like really late, but, and also you're like, part two? What the heck? Yes, this is a part of an ongoing series of conversations with the cast and crew of Stargate SG-1, Atlantis Universe, and the movie. Um, thank you so much for being here. I would like uh, to welcome someone who has become a friend of mine uh, throughout this process, someone uh, who uh, I was in the trenches with way back uh, when Atlantis and SG-1 were wrapped and was getting all the costumes together for auction. Valerie Halverson, will you please join me on stage, please? Costume designer Val Halverson, SG-1, Atlantis, and Universe. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. Good evening, everybody. Hi. Thank you for joining me. And you're right. We have become friends. We went through so much when those shows wrapped. Didn't there they? was a week long process <sighs> of give of selection and and itemization and bagging and shipping, and we moved. 2,000 pieces? Probably, yeah. 2,500? Yeah, and it was a trip down memory lane for a Just lot of us. extraordinary. It. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. So you have gotten a, a little gift uh, together for us tonight. You did SG-1 seasons 9 and 10. 10, season mainly. Season 10, mainly. Yeah. Uh, Atlantis seasons 4 and 5. Correct. And all of universe. Correct. And here we are celebrating this, this thing that you were a part of years later. Yeah. Is that... Was it obvious at the time that it would last as long as it has and continue to be as special as it is? Or is part of you pinching yourself that we're still talking about this thing? Well, I think we all knew it was very special. There was no doubt about what Brad and Robert had put together and what Paul and Joe and, and Carl continued on show running. It was amazing. And every script we got, and I've heard this on a few, many panels actually, because we all felt the same way, Every script we got was like, what's next? What can we do? How can we excel? How can we you know, create more interesting things? They just always elevated our craft. Wow. So let's take a look at some of that craft uh, assembled uh, here. If, if you don't mind, Francis, we're going to go ahead and, um, and bring up uh, a little slideshow and make sure to put it on pause there. Um, that uh, that Valerie, mainly Valerie, <laughs> has put together. Wow. So this is SG-1. Yeah, there's the gang. Man, they were great. Yeah, I was lucky enough to join them in season nine as the assistant to Christine Mooney, who was an amazing designer. And when she had to step away from the show, I was given the opportunity to design, and that was in season 10. Let's have a look. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and design we did. No. Design <laughs> You're going to see all sorts of things here. So <laughs> Especially SG-1. Well, we know Ben Browder wore that one. So th this is battle dress uniforms. Yeah. So this is, this is um, uh, obtained from, from stock, or did you guys make these we your own yourselves? We did not make any of those military uniforms on SG-1. That came Kay. later. Okay. These were very authentic. That's a Vala costume when she uh, went to Earth, and it was always fun because she was such an incredible character. I used to love doing crazy things, and I mean, this is 15 years ago, right. so I'm still loving it. This is Family Ties, I think. I th yeah, of, yeah. Of manicures and Victoria's Secret, right? <laughs> so there was a accompanying well, yeah, one for, for Carter. The other was. I don't think we have a picture <laughs> of that, but yeah, super fun. That's actually Adria. That was her, um, we actually have a sketch that goes with this a little further along. Uh, when she was, when Ball imprisoned her. Right. And she took off this Dominion. amazing coat. And this Correct. was underneath. And I will tell you something interesting about that one, that um, I was looking for a new kind of leather, something really feminine, and I couldn't find it. So my cutter and I made this costume, and we actually made the leather, and then we added ribbon, and we added lace, and we stitched it all together. Because there's nothing more interesting to a director of photography or a cin cinematographer than texture and things that catch light and things. So this was uh, one of my favorite outfits. <laughs> that's, that's, that's like <laughs> I think Vala <laughs> and Unending, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> My gosh! I, I actually think can't remember which. I think it's from, I think it's Vala and yeah. Unending. Uh, am I wrong? Good for her. I think that's it. All right. Oh, those are great. That's Christine McCory's great work. 
Now this this, fun, this yeah. is you know symbolic of of everything that that the show you know was SG one. I think this may be a continuum costume because it's awfully dang sharp. It's I got amazing. these things. <laughs> Jeez, I got fifty Jaffa costumes <gasps> from production, and all it was was giant cardboard boxes, heavy as hell. Yeah. And you think, oh, I've got fifty costumes. No, I've got 50 pieces of costumes. Yeah. I may have like 30 were, costumes. I think they were 22 pieces. Right. Yeah, and and every one. And yeah. so, you know, by the uh, by the end of it, I mean, I because that most of them are of a relatively standard size. Yes. At, at least you'd think that and then I got through this thing and those like the, I I can only have so many com the the pieces are complete, but right. there's only so many sizes that go together. Yes. Because they were on so many guys, yeah. you know? And but it was a trip trying to reassemble that. We Let me tell you. you a map, probably. I I, I figured it out on my own. <laughs> <laughs> it took a while, but yeah. it's like they were pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's S G one. Yeah. Oh, Cliff Simon. Cliff Simon, one of my favorite actors to dress as well. As I love this. Great person. This is the quest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think I like it probably even more than the one from, as beautiful as the one was from Continuum, there's something about this one with the ribbing yeah. on it yeah, that just lit that. up. Yeah. I was really, really happy. And, and his one belt? One of the first ones I made for him. Well, of yeah. course, our, our um, model department made the belt. And yeah. Incredible work. The metal work that these people would produce yeah. on just a dime. Yeah, and then I just put it on my costume and take all the credit. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah. Another also one. Ball. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Insiders. Oh, I love the richness of this fabric. Okay. Okay, bear with me. I'm not an artist. I'm a costume designer. This is a, a picture that helps my cutters know what I'm trying to say. You know, there's many people that are more talented and. No, it's it's good. It's good. Oh. I think this is Stronghold, if I'm not mistaken. This is one where he's on the uh, the gold mothership, and mm -hmm. a bunch of him is walking around, and he's walking around in this just regal yeah. robe, yeah. and it was just you know he. The lining was quite amazing. Yeah, I think it was gold too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jasic. Jasic, yeah. Virginia dialogue. So that's the upper part uh, the, with with the with the, the, coat. the coat. Yeah, with the red lining to come through the gate with Bala. Yeah. So this is the <laughs> this is one of the first things I designed for Marina Baccarin and when she was you know the um, head of the Aura, I guess. And I was really I was telling David the story how I was trying to think what would she want? You know, she's she's running the show and she's a little bit of a princess, so she wanted to look just like those guys, but we had to sort of make it a girl size. And so I kind of shrunk it all down and made it a little more feminine. But that's a lot of that is taken from the Ori Warriors. So she, she could do anything. This one I love because it was just a happy sa um, circumstance that once we had that made and, it, and it's rich and beautiful and moved beautifully. And when she moved her arm, it looked like a galaxy. Yes. That lace was just, and I thought, oh, that worked out really great. Just <laughs> very, yeah. Sometimes oh, it's just it terrific. Does, yeah. She she looks like a messiah. <laughs> it's just amazing, <laughs> yeah. And there's the sketches. I love your sketch work. Oh. How how much time on average would you spend on a sketch, and how long? You know, at what point is it okay? I need to get the idea down. Yes. You know, how long is this going to take to really get, because you know the people who you're working with yes. who are going to interpret the information. Yeah. And of course you can tell them, this is kind of this, right. this is that. Right, they get used to you. Yeah, And Correct. what you like and stuff. Well, you'll see a little further along that there's many pages where I just have lots of little tiny little sketches and that's how it goes through my head is I'm just, what am I gonna do? I'll start with an idea. And then it actually evolves into this. And then this would be one that I would show the boys. It would be a little bit, you know, better, a little bit colored, and you know, some of the textures and everything in it. So this would take me, you know, probably a good hour to two hours to do this. How um, precise were Brad and Rob? And I, I, I remember you sharing the story in episode one about um, this is too designed for the, for yeah. the, um, uh, the Lucian Alliance. But in yeah. terms of like something like this, was it more or less a sign-off? You know, like 
Val, we trust you. Do your thing. Most of the time, it's a sign off. Most or of were the they time. like, okay, I would like to see this. And like, were no. they Steve Jobsing you? N absolutely not. Yeah. The the most trusting, you know, f head of the family you could ever have. And that was the great thing is, um, you worked so closely with the actors as well as to how they felt. And then you worked so closely with like Dan Shea stunts to see what right. they were going to be doing, and all of those things factored into it. But Really, they wanted a beautiful, rich look, and they gave you carte blanche. There you go. And yeah. you had the budget to buy bolts of all kinds of yeah. things. Yeah. I might still have a few pieces <laughs> of fabric around. <laughs> Shiny black things. I don't know. I think sci-fi. Right? Yeah. That was her flame dress. Oh. Oh, that was her, yeah. Yeah. That looked like Dominion back there. And that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man. That one never made it to camera. I think you might know why. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like some fancy palazzo pants or something. <laughs> <laughs> that one never made it. That's Bala. Just working out, you know, what she needed to give her a look that was similar to Adria, but not the same. So those are sort of my... Whoop! Ideas. Back up a little bit, Francis. This one. That's a good one. Because that's all my notes to my sewers and to my okay. cutters and that is like that's how, how that long works. I want it, you know, how the sleeve looks. And it, it gives a lot more detail information. That's more what they get. Okay. Yeah. So there's sort of like three processes. There's a little, you know, working through the idea. Then there's this that breaks it down for my cutters. And then there's the one that's actually colored. Do you have a budget for every episode? Yes. How does it work? Yeah. You get a, you know, we had a standard budget. Okay her episode, but in the end, it needed to add up to this much. Okay. Right? So, and, you know, people like Carl and Joe and Paul would say, uh, just so you know, three episodes away, we're giving you a whole civilization or an army or something, and right. we want you to start thinking about it and start yeah. planning it and stuff. So that'd be a little Get the juices bump, going. bit of a bump up on that. Oh, one. I would, I yeah, would hope so. Just sheer numbers. But we did so many big shows. We did so many civilizations. So, well, I, um, Francis, can you switch back to us for a second? Is that possible? Um, I have in my living room the um, one of three outfits that were designed for the Pegasus Asgard in wow. First Contact and Lost Tribe. Wow. What a suit that was, yeah. because it had, uh, under, under uh, according to Joseph Malazzi, yeah. each suit was $100,000 in development, in R&D. Right. So that would have been for Cena McCoy. For season five of Atlantis. Oh. Right. First Contact and Lost Tribe. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and then these <laughs> are the costumes so that went on to Universe. Yeah. So you modified the helmets. So for something like that, I mean, how did you, because I mean, most of it is plastic and, you know, uh, uh, just, uh, oh, what do we call it? Whatever that was, you know, you yeah. rip things off and put it back on. The Velcro, um, Velcro and, the, and all the, that. Yeah, How much of that did you design that for those, those suits? Those were actually a lot of board in our metal shop. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, and he was amazing. But that took even more. Because it had the, to. Yeah, those products Lights that he uses are so expensive. So R&D, yes. Yeah, a lot. just extraordinary. The, yeah. the manpower and everything else. It's just James Robbins would produce an item, oh. and then those guys... It's like bringing it into, they would will it into reality. Yeah. Sometimes exactly like they it were was. geniuses. I mean, you'd give them an idea and they would produce it and you couldn't. Right. It wasn't like I was testing them. I just couldn't believe how talented right, they Right, absolutely. Yeah. Thank really you, Francis. Us. Let's go ahead and go back. Moving on. On to Stargate Atlantis. Under the sea. Yeah, so I love this because this shows uh, when I was first asked to come on to Stargate Atlantis. Christina McQuarrie was going on to the, on to the movies. And, um, you know, Joe and, and uh, Paul and Carl and, and uh, Brad and Robert were like, you know, we're, we're pretty happy with it. You know, do you see anything uh, that you might want to change? And the only thing I, th you know, really thought of is I wanted to streamline the uniforms. Christina had done a beautiful job and the identifying colors and everything. But I just sort of have a a bit of a reputation for doing things a little fitted, a little sexy, and, and I kind of wanted to bring that. So you'll mm. see, you know, um, how
how beautiful that costume is on, on Robert. And so I did that, and, and I said, I just want to change them a little bit and sleek them up a little bit. And they said, okay. And I said, well, I had a little idea. I was thinking that everybody, our, you know, our lead cast, should really have a look for off-world. And we would contain, like, keep their characters within that. And that was one of my most fun projects. I mean, can you imagine putting Rodney McKay in, in a leather jacket? You know, he's such a, a, a brilliant scientist nerd that it, it was, you know, I had to kind of figure out how to do that for him. And so it was a sort of a sturdier jacket. But if you look closely on the left sleeve, there's a pocket protector, of course, right made down of leather. Right down to it. You know, and I mean. Let's uh, go, let's uh, have a look. All right, this is a, uh, that may be, um, okay, these, Amanda's. yeah, or Jewel, yeah. Or Jewel, yeah, I think it's yellow. There's Picardo's right yeah. there. Yeah, And that was so. introduced in The Last Man when he came on for the first time. He's so. just, yeah, we all love him. Absolutely. Yeah. There's that's, Jewel. That's Jewel, yeah, that fellow. What's that? that, is that McKay? Is that got a Canadian flag on it? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how, how you I tell. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. 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 So is that, was that Jasic? I think that was Jasic. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was trying to figure yeah. out how that, okay. So back he to SG1, y'all. Yeah. I was going to miss some in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's all Sorry. Right. That's all right. Now this cloak. That's Tear. That's Tear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, Taylor. Taylor. So she was actually really fun. Uh, to do her off-world black leather costume because she was such a warrior and, you know, she fought so much and did so many stunts that, but if you look closely at hers, it's very fitted and very feminine, but there's like little bits of black fur coming out of it. There's an elegance to everything I wanted to do for Taylor. Her, her costumes always featured, almost always featured Athos in some way. Yes. Like it never left her. No. Yeah. No, it was just so much fun and Oh, that's, uh, that's Jewel, when she was, what's the name of that? Uh, Brainstorm. Brainstorm. Oh, yeah. my God, when they were frozen. From television. And had Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye, the science guy. And, you know, that was just such a fun episode. Speaking of Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> There's his tuxedo. There they, there they are. are. There's the boys. And Neil brought his own tie. He wasn't sure I would have one with enough planets and stars on it. <laughs> He happened to have a small inventory of them, <laughs> but I found bills for him. Harmony. Harmony. Yeah. Yeah. This Mardola is or I, I get one of the sisters. I can't think of the other one. Uh, there's sisters. okay. Yeah. Harmony. That's a grown up apparently. Yeah. <laughs> and that's wasn't that Jeannie? That was the other sister. No, that was the other sister. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I was thinking it's Jeannie Miller. So this costume. Uh, I have one of these as well, and uh, they are amazing. They are. Just the the number of pieces that takes half an hour to assemble. Yes. With yes. with no living person inside to help you out, yeah. um, easily. And some of them had a uh, a prop built into their their chests so that uh, it could um, self destruct, because that's the idea. If they get mm -hmm. captured, they can press this down mm -hmm. and then they blow. So. You know those, those are amazing. And amazing also costumes. The, the model shots. Yes. Oh, imagine the R and D on that as well. I'm ridiculous. Yeah. Because yeah. it's it's so organic. Yeah. And now we're moving on to the the Wraith Commander is here. James Lafazanos. I can't imagine how many of these things he wore, but he mm -hmm. that was a man who could wear clothes. Uh, I mean, they so. were you know Chris Hyredell and all those yes, guys were Chris. tall and lanky, and they you had to to sweep through a spaceship with your leathers on. You know? <laughs> it's amazing. We tried to do some little different things on there, but they, you know, really kept that sleeve that Christina McQuarrie had designed. Is oh, that the, oh go back, yeah. Yeah. Is that Taylor? Taylor and McQueen. That is Taylor. And, and this was a really fun one to do. I mean, I don't know if you can see it close up, but even the shoulders, I did like a crocodile back, so it had the, right. the spurs kind of on it, so that it would look really great. She was in a dark, you know, dark, a lot of times and and that and I wanted it to shimmer and move and have texture and yeah and take up space and everything but she had to do backflips and everything in this so <laughs> we had I was like how do we do that in a wraith queen costume so we ended up putting her in like riding culottes that we made it was a bit of a stretch but we had Pardon to do the pun. it <laughs> there's a 
there's some movie magic element that you really yeah. have to take into that. And I love this outfit as well with Andy. Yeah. Um, talk about someone who could wear really wear the clothing. Yeah, um, she's fantastic. And you come in and see her, and she's got this whole thing on top of her, plugged into the hive, you know, yes. providing some sort of nourishment or exactly. something. Exactly. Oh, it was amazing. It was she amazing was to watch. Yeah. yeah. She could put up with makeup, man. Yeah. Just zen out. <laughs> Speaking of. Do that. There's this guy. What a great design. See, you know, um, from beginning to end. He's just. Connor Trenier. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's some so design work for that. Is this another one that you would have sent to your people to say this is how I want it? That was me working through like how I wanted him to slightly change. Okay. Yeah. This is some Wraith piece, but I'm not he sure what it he is. He can't, yeah. Does yep. anybody know what that one is? Anybody identify that one? Oh, let's talk about Wraith. Oh, Dance. yes. Uh, Jason Momo? <laughs> Momo? <laughs> is that what you call him? <laughs> Does he answer? <laughs> Never. Um, so when we were doing the off-world costumes, of course, I wanted to do something amazing for Ronan Dax. This is the cow, right? This is what we called, we nicknamed the cow, because J Jason is six foot five, and if you put a regular coat on him, it looks like a little, you know, pixie thing. So um, Sam McKinnon was my, my Ronan Dax lead builder, and I wanted him to look like a warrior who had gathered things from his conquests and from different planets he'd been to and everything. So there's like metal pieces on it, there was fur on it, there was skins from trapping, there was different kinds of leather on it, and it weighed about 20 pounds. Like you could barely lift it. I don't know how he wore it all day, but man, he loved it. And it was and stitched like on the run as, yes, as yes, he was. It was all hand stitched and with gut and all that. It was yeah. quite authentic. And of course, we had more than one because he was always grumpy. So yeah, it was a big project. There it is. So it turned out better than the sketch. <laughs> Absolutely. Say. I was very pleased with it. Yeah. Ah, Taylor. Taylor again. Yeah, and there's the wow. The reel. Now this is a uh, this is Ronan in uh, Runner. Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. It's actually. Is that Jewel again? That's Jewel again. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's a duplicate. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And. Okay, Taylor, Taylor from season four. Taylor might have been pregnant. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So that was an interesting challenge. Uh, Rachel is so wonderful and so fun to design for, and loved her character so much. But we had a, a running costume, you know, department working just for her because it, she was truly pregnant. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very much so. Yeah. And then Kanan. Um, yeah. I was gonna These episodes yeah. were really hard to watch. You know, there was something just a little too, mm -hmm. you know, that should have been my baby kind of mindset. Michael always was like, you know, because there was a romance tension under yes, the surface in Michael sure. as Taylor was trying to seduce him into being a human, Yeah, you know? And he kind of seduced right back in his own twisted ways. Okay. So, but a beautiful yeah. costume. Did that, I mean, that, did that really, uh, you, you don't you don't often see that kind of clothing in a in a sci-fi show. Did it, pregnancy you know wise? Did yeah. it really give you a chance to depart into some, some it was, it more was a pedestrian directions? Challenge. Yeah, because everything even had to grow while we were filming. Right, because, because she's she growing. Was changing so quickly, and you would have a fitting three days before you shot the right. The, you know, we do it as close as we could, and then it would be seven or eight days of shooting, and she would she would literally change in the wow. In the I love this one because we were always trying to distract and, and still make it as rich and beautiful uh -huh. as she should have, but making her comfortable as well. Absolutely. And covered and, and everything. Did, so she, did she share appreciation oh, about it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Rachel is amazing. Yeah. Val, you've done a terrible job, Val. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I didn't hear that. I must have <laughs> out of the Michael Kenmore right there after his full transformation. Yeah. This, is, this is, I'm thinking... Um, the prodigal, so and he he and his men were were built very similarly. So speaking of, there you go. Yeah. But a little, can we go back and have a look at it, Francis? There we go. Thank you. Yeah. And Taylor, this is no, missing. Missing. I think. Yeah. yeah. Missing all. Another Taylor. Another Taylor. Lots of Taylor. All right. Ah. <laughs> One of my favorite human beings. And hopefully one of yours too, Joel Goldsmith. Yeah, this is his uh, his outfit. 
Um, I uh, uh, it was great to have him on Vegas. Yeah, and that was um, a great fun yeah, show. with Charlie Cohen is in that in that scene, um, and uh, someone from The Sopranos, I think. Yes, yes. So I'm trying to remember his name. The Sorry. name doesn't wrong genre it's for not me. Not coming to me. Yeah. Right, and Punk Wraith, <laughs> Neil um, Jackson. Jackson. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that Just was really fun to you know to make him sort of fit in in Vegas. And right, wouldn't take a whole lot. Just a couple of contact lenses and some makeup, and yeah. You know, he's got it, so. Yeah. I think that's another Taylor. Taylor, yeah. Okay, so, yes, the um, re uh, Search and Rescue, Shepard. Shepard, yeah. Yeah, so I apologize, okay. I didn't move this one up, yeah. That's okay, that's okay. I think that's also Kanan, isn't it? Yeah, okay, this is one of my favorite um, designs for Ronin is, is we show the gauntlets um, in maybe in the next one, but I wanted to make something really amazing for him uh, because we tried so many things. We'd done so many uh, different ways of leather that I actually built this leather. We bought like elephant skins and boar skins. And then I would add like um, uh, foam underneath and then I would cover it with like ostrich ridges and stuff. And then my breakdown team turned it into looking almost like metal. Like they were so, so talented. And this is one of my favorite pieces that he ever wore. And I think he just wore it once. Uh, okay. uh, unfortunately, but. Are yeah. those the gauntlets that go with that? Yeah, so we built all those ridges and, and everything by piecing together different leathers and then painting it. And I just love the way it turned out. The fabrication process. I mean, for something like that, how long would it take for you guys to, to work through that? A day, a few days? Oh, a week for sure for those. Cause it's, it's like they were, you know, neoprene and felt and making them comfortable also for your actor so that's all the time. 40 man hours there yeah yeah and then the the um <laughs> when i told my leather girl pat what i wanted to do she looked at me and said you are crazy <laughs> like i you know and she just said why do you think of these things like and i was <laughs> to I torture you i want to keep the fans <laughs> interested yeah. and happy and i want my characters to be constantly evolving and built and true to their character and I want my actors to be happy and I want mm -hmm. my producers to be happy. Absolutely. Did the I actors get to keep their uniforms? Not really. There might have been the odd piece that fell off the back of the truck as we like to say, but what we did is in the last, in season five of Atlanta specifically, all the actors had had kids, like David had right, uh, Baz and, and yeah. stuff, and we made miniatures of their oh. costumes for their kids. So they That's all have a mini cute. one. Yeah, so we had nothing going on. We weren't busy, so we thought we'd try and figure out something else to do. The yeah. number of costumes that, that we got for Flanagan, just the black BDUs, oh, again and again, and, and they would sell well, but at a certain point there was, um, there was auction fatigue. There was there was mar there was saturation of the market because I would I would post this, yeah. like uh, I would try to switch it up, yeah. um, but if you posted the same thing week after week, you, you could watch that the same type of item was dramatically reduced in value yeah. the next week, and it would be, a, a sh it was it was crazy to post the um, he had a Nike wristband yeah. that was inverted, yeah. and that was always his. Thing. It was and to this day, he won't explain anything about it because people are like, well, the wristband, you know, well, he liked it. Yeah. The first one went for like 1500 bucks. Oh, it's amazing. It's ridiculous. And I wasn't allowed to say that there were multiples. And I felt terrible yeah. for the person who got that one. Yeah. And then the wristband 50, you know, yeah. went for like, well, still like 40, 50 bucks. But still, you know, it's just crazy. The, the, the fan base for each of these characters was extreme. And we had to have so many multiples for everything because of the action and the degradation of it, the Correct. breakdown on it, as you can see in that one. Yep. <laughs> and we knew in the story that Lannis was getting all the bucks anyway from the oversight committee, so it made <laughs> sense that they would keep on having them. So. Great. Oh, now, who is that? Oh, that's one. Now that was, I can't remember his, his name, but the reason I wanted to show it is because another time that I was trying to do something new and I ended up using guitar strings to make 
Oh, I like see. Kind of on the shoulder and on the yoke. And I had to be really careful because he was a heavily stunted guy. Okay. And he had l he was falling off roofs and stuff. And I just had to make sure they were really bolted down that they didn't ping off and impale them. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. But I just thought it was a different look. So yep. you'd be surprised where you can get stuff to make costumes. I can't wait to see the costumes after this because mm -hmm. how creative you've all been and what your ideas are are just going to blow me away, I'm sure. Okay, let's keep on going. Yep. Okay. Bola Kai. Oh, yeah. Bola Kai, yes. Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. Yeah. This was so fun. What a cool, that was I really wish we fun. saw more of them. I really do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll keep going. Yep. <laughs> I oh, love that's, this. That's one of my favorite. That's with the, the bowl of Kai and me. <laughs> Quick break. The, that looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad thing. <laughs> the Jedi. That was yeah. the the season one, for, and and you got to evolve them as as they went along too. Yeah. So now who's this? I can't make it out. It's I've been trying to travelers. figure it out. Travelers. Is it the travelers? It has a little bit of a feel of the travelers. I think okay. the next one is the travelers sketch. So travelers was Jill Wagner, and and um, the thing that was so important that uh, James Robbins and I had a chat. Uh, as what he was going to do with the rusted old ship that had been trapped for like 300 years, and we decided that it was going to be kind of watery. So I entrusted our model shop to make me some rubber pieces mm -hmm. that were textured, and then we had leather and fabric, and we sewed it all together. Check this out, guys. And oh, no, Taylor, it's, it's, actually, it's next it's after that. The, the end. It'll come up. Okay. It'll come up. And then my my breakdown team made it look like it was oxidized metal oh, wow it was it was phenomenal what yeah. a great job they did yeah so it looked really good in the ship yeah ah oh, one of my faves of Taylor and there's a you great know, episode the fight of the the two gods right <laughs> there's her off world outfit yeah yeah she's a killer isn't she she's just the best dynamite yeah I loved the the Taylor Woolsey dynamic, yeah. especially when when the baby comes along. <laughs> and she looked good in her uniform. She did. Yeah. Sam. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Amanda, when she got to wear uh, something leather and not yeah. military, tucked into some military boots, she just about cried in that fitting. She was like, "And it fits me." Yeah. So and she she looked great. Ah, oh, Varro. Kirik and uh, this is Kirik. Oh, Kirik. Sorry. He was not Varro yet. <laughs> He's between Odai Ventrell and Varro. <laughs> Ran so. into him at all. <laughs> yeah. um, he was always fun. Jules, great. Shep. Oh, ruggedly handsome. There's your pocket protector. Right there on right the side. Right there. <laughs> 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 and he looks happy about it as usual. He was so fun. Come on. We just can we just do the one tier? Uh, this the oh the, yeah, this tier. Ah, there's, ah, the there's guitar the guitar strings. strings. A little close up, yeah. Another Taylor. Yeah. So did we reach? They're all sold. Sorry. This is weird and be all my sins remembered. Yeah. My probably my favorite surprise appearance oh. in the entire franchise. Oh, that's it funny. was so and th you know, you saw I saw it, it was so dimly lit. Yes. And you see the costume with this like burnt orange, yeah. this like almost cool. pumpkin orange. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. it was cool. I loved it. She was so great. Yeah, lots More of variations. Yeah. She was always so wonderful. I love that sketch. Well, that's the one where it ripped off and underneath he had the knives. Right, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that was an interesting uh, logistical costume, which so many of them were. So we do have a lot of photos. We have yeah, you, you did some work, yeah. yeah. There's the travelers There's right the there. Travelers. You see the, the ribbing, so the, the piping on there? And then we painted them all, and yeah, it was quite a challenge. Man. Fabric, leather, and rubber all painted to match, yeah. A few duplicates there. Maybe even scoot ahead to SGU. Yeah, let's move on to SGU. Yeah. Right? <laughs> You can pause them on Dial the Gate and take a look at each of them. No? 
This can't be the end of it. No. It, Did it Atlantis have really more color? Creative in each of them was so different creatively. Here we go. But yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Here we go, gang. <laughs> My red inspiration? Oh, go back, I Francis. Wish. I might have been blonde then. No, I think I was a redhead then. <laughs> right there. All right. So Dr. Nicholas Rush, yeah. Robert Carlyle. Yeah. So and, uh, this is the full outfit this that is went his, through the gate. He actually um, he actually was at the university then with, sh with Shanks. Yes. But um, the and then the next photo is him with the jacket off, I think. And the thing that was so interesting is that about SGU is we knew it was coming. We knew they were going to get stranded, so it was really important for me to layer everybody, make them so that there'd be some interest as the seasons went on and on. And when Bobby Carlisle and I, we were chatting uh, before he actually arrived in Vancouver, and we sort of came to this idea of him looking a bit professorial, but a little bit more casual. And I had found this, we made his vest, and we made his jacket, and we bought the jeans and the t-shirts. But I wanted to do something interesting so that when he moved, you know, if the vest opened or something. And I found this, this silk fabric, and the more I looked at it, the, there was something about it that looked a bit like a moon surface, but it had peacocks on it. But what I convinced my cutter to do was to cut it into little pieces and create a new fabric, and it looked like a, a, a planet surface. And mm. when I told Bobby about it in the fitting, he was like, oh, you know, okay. And, and he went away that night, and he came back for a fitting the next day, and he said, I've decided I want to put a pocket in there, Val, and I want to have my little pad and my little yellow pencil in that pocket, so I'm always opening my vest, because I really like that idea. Mm -hmm. It's like a little ode to the galaxy, right? <laughs> so I felt really honored that our number one guy, Bobby Carlisle, thought that was a good idea. And we made about 30 of them. <laughs> you know. Yeah, he's so good. He wore it well. Yeah. And you know, um, Universe <laughs> was interesting because we got to create the military. <laughs> it's not an right. image joke. We got to create the military look. It wasn't authentic. It wasn't a, an actual one. So we decided to go with black. Yes. Um, not only because it's my favorite color, but it shows wear and tear, and it shows dust, and it you know you can sand it, and you can make it look old and torn and. And it was really magical for us. Louis? Yeah. Ah, uh, there's I think Elena. we saw her today. I think yeah. so. Yeah, okay, well, Dusty. Brian? Wonderful. What was it well, like working with? Her. I'm just going to reiterate oh, for oh, that. Sorry, yeah. What was it like working with Elena Huffman on the show while she was uh, growing through her pregnancy? Yeah, yeah. Well, we clothing. ended up finding a way around that, right? But we had a we had a, a, a um, inventory of uh, marine outfits from Greer, and then we had established another uh, background guy in a button front shirt, and we were able to. We wanted it to be believable that she borrowed it from somebody, so we established him a couple episodes before, kind of front and center, and then she was able to borrow that. Yeah. You know, she was happy to get into a new outfit, too. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Ming Na Wen. Ming Na, yeah. There, it's, there it is. <laughs> On the planet. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Bentley. Greer. So you were you were be sure to make sure that he was uh, that the Marines were represented. Yeah, and they were very authentic. Like we were very uh, meticulous about him, and of course David. Is the font Impact for you are here? I'm thinking it's Impact. I don't know what it is. Robert Cooper chose that T-shirt. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah, and and we thought long and hard about you know should it be an image, a graphic, a, you know a, one of our designs or whatever. And then Robert Cooper found that. Of course, it was a genius idea because he's the creator. Uh, and then it just worked great. <laughs> yeah. Elise Levesque. Yeah. 
And she was the, the most fish out of water. Oh, absolutely. She was going one. on kind of a kind of a, a trip for a couple of days and then head back home to California, but just, uh, just a little further. Yeah, thank goodness she bought a little carry brought a little carry-on bag with a yoga outfit in it. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Right. But <laughs> and that's when you go too far from home. Oh yeah. And that's when you go into your we into go. the mind. That was a what a beautiful wedding dress. Thank you. Did you design that? Yeah, we made it. Wow. Yeah. We made everything. We had so much fun. Kiva. Is that Kiva? Yeah. Skin. Julie McNiven. Yeah. I loved this this uh, this the update Lucian. to the Lucian outfit. Yeah. yeah. There's Varro. Yeah. And I will tell you, this is the one time that Brad Wright, I'm going to confess to something, Brad Wright said to me, you've gone too far. And, and we had pumped them up a bit more. I wanted them to look like SWAT team, but in the future, so I put all the padding underneath the leather. And we had them, I had um, actually built these, these perfect chests with abs and everything, and we were gonna make every soldier look identical, and he said to me, you've gone too far, take it down. And I, and you I sent did. everyone home. I s yeah, I sent, yeah. Oh man, that yeah. Story? Yeah, I sent everybody, my whole shop of 20 people, I sent them home and said, I don't know what you're coming to tomorrow, but you need to go, because I got nothing for you. Just start, and we were at assembly line making, maybe 50 of them, mm. and they didn't know what to do, and I stayed there till like 11 at night, just trying to figure it out, and I came up I with an idea. hope there weren't idea. too many tears. Oh, there was a few. Uh. <laughs> but uh, no, you want, I, you want to make your creator happy. Of you know? course, so it was very important to me, so he seemed happy after. Yeah. Yeah. We'll look at and this there set. we go. We ended with on Ben. That's my favorite photo. So this is what two, three in the morning. Uh, probably the very last on minute unending. We were shooting SG one. Yeah. The last minute. They Everyone stayed. Rap. Yeah. That's from unending. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's it. Thank you so much. You're this welcome. was such a treat. So, I wish I had time for Welcome questions. Does anyone have a short one? Okay, good. <laughs> well, I okay. Hopefully, Thank we you. answered everything. Yes, absolutely. This this was was uh, so exciting for me to get you up here to go through some of these memories uh, together, and uh, I, I really uh, appreciate uh, the time that you've spent uh, with me over the years mm -hmm. and uh, with the larger community. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for staying fans. Absolutely. You know, we're so proud of of our work and we're so happy that you enjoy it too. Francis, you good to go? Valerie, thank you again. My pleasure. My name is David Reed for Dial the Gate. See you on the other side.